So that was a follow-up to the other two videos. And here I figured what we can do is we can directly network these two ECGs to each other. Uh, this ECG here is connected to the SIM cube, and you can see behind this window it's pulling the trend information off of that. This machine, what we want to do is be able to view, the end goal is to view this trend information on this ECG. And to do that, we have to set up static IP addresses so that they can talk directly to each other. Machines, I have removed the networking configuration on both of them. So they're both trying to use THCP. This system does not use the automatic IP addressing system that Windows and Mac and stuff would use. Um, it's given itself this IP address and this particular IP address is the host name, is the host IP address. So this, this address actually resolves to itself. So there's no way for it to be able to talk to this machine. What we have to do is set up the network for that. And unlike with normal computers, uh, which you could take a single ethernet cable and plug it into both computers and network them directly that way, these devices are not capable of doing that. Uh, they don't have what's called auto MDIX, which is able to, uh, basically it allows them to be able to reconfigure their ports so that you can use a direct link between one and the other. They don't have that feature. So unfortunately what, ha what you have to do is you have to use a switch. Uh, the alternative would be use a crossover cable between the two. Um, but I went ahead and just went with a switch. It's currently set up like this. So it's, it's very similar to the examples in the previous two videos. We just have PC, uh, ECGs here instead of PCs, and we have our single switch up here. Here is not like the switch in the server rack over there. Um, this is just a simple 16 port switch. It's not a smart or a managed switch, so it's just a plug and play. Uh, it doesn't have any of the advanced features, but that's okay. What we really just need this here is to be the middleman between these ECGs. So just to start, I will close this out. And what I'll try to do is, our end goal is we want to view the remote trends, which is this button here. And you can see here, there's nothing listed as available. It would, it would have a select the subnet, which is actually different than the networking subnet, but we'll not go into that. Um, if this was able to be seen on this machine, it would show up on here. We'd be able to click it, and we'd be able to see the remote trends from this machine. So what we need to do is we need to give both of these machines an IP address that allows them to directly connect to each other. All right, so I'm going to start off by configuring the first ECG here. I had to turn all the lights off because it's so there's so much glare on these screens, but hopefully it still comes out okay. Um, this button right up in here, that one, is the one you want to select. That will take you to this window. And from here, you want to go into Privileged Access and you want to type in the command or the password for the uh, Biomed user. So once you've got the password entered in, just press the enter button. It'll come up with this configuration window. And up here at the top will be network setup. And in here, what we want to do is firstly deselect DHCP and we want to give it a IP address that it's able to use. So in this case, what I did is I used, like our previous examples, 192.168.0.1 with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. And once you have that set, you want to go to save. It'll ask you to reset the monitor to, take, to have the changes take effect. I'll do that and I'll go over to this one and I will do the same process. Okay, so just like that one over there, I set this one to its corresponding IP address, 192.168.0.2, with the same subnet mask as before. So now I hit save and reset monitor. And this will reset, and I will turn the lights back on and show you the rest of this. All right, so now that the networking is set up, we can double click the question mark up here. You can see this one has the IP address we assigned. Same for this one here. So now if we go to remote trends on this computer, click this button, you can see up here, we now have a subnet that's showing up. If we click on that, 
SL31. And full bed review. You'll see it populate here, and it'll start pulling the trend information from this machine onto this machine. And that's all going through this networking switch here. So the more realistic scenario is what we have set up on these two tables. Um, this ECG here is a different ECG. It also has a simulator back over here that's providing the trend information here. If I click on there, you can see that it's, that's its current IP address and it's been obtained through DHCP. And that's going, the signal, the information from this ECG is being sent through the network up to this switch here, into this set of ports. And this, these eight ports here are defined as one VLAN for the ECGs. And from there, it's being sent out to the central station. It's also going through another cable to this switch here, which is then being sent to other devices on this network, like this ECG here. And over here, we have our ECG that we set the static IP address on earlier. So right now, this is using an IP address that does not match to the rest of this network. So if I go to the CCG here, the IP address is not the same. In fact, if I go to our central station here, go to the settings setup, and then network setup, this is the network that it's supposed to be using. So the subnet mask is the same, but you can see that the numbers up here, the actual IP address is different. Um, so in order to have a valid IP address, we need to have it set to match this network, at the very minimum, these three numbers, and then a valid number in this box here. But because we have all this set up already, and this is getting its information through DHCP, what we wanna do is set this one back to DHCP and it will automatically set up all that stuff for us. So same as before, I'm going to go back into privileged access and go back into the networking panel. One little thing I should show before we do that though is if you go to the trend information or the remote view information, you can see here our ECG is still there and it still gives you the option to do a full bed, full bed view, but it's actually not going to work because the network that this ECG is on that it's trying to access is on a different network. All right, so now that I'm back in the network setup, um, I don't have to worry about these fields. What I can do is just press the DHCP button and then press save and then reset the monitor. And when it reboots, it will get a dynamically assigned IP address from the rest of this network that will be valid for and match the rest of this network. So once this comes back up, what I can do again is press the remote trends button. Take a second to come back up. There it is. SL32 and then full bed review. And you can see it's populating now. And you're able to read the trend information just like before, but this time it's all done through DHCP.